It's the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus, not only the caucus but also the foundation uh, are instrumental in putting this brunch on. It is so important that you know we have this opportunity to be with the people of New Orleans and across the state. The caucus yeah, was a group that was formed to, to enhance uh, opportunities for black America, black uh, Louisians, uh, and to overcome a lot of the systemic challenges that face the black, uh, black community. The purpose of our organization really is to raise funds through the foundation to be able to provide young people an opportunity to be able to go to college, access to higher education, whether it's uh, at a two-year or four-year university or college. It's so important that they be able to have their dreams accomplished and we're able to do that by having this event as a fundraiser and being able to honor young people who are who've just been outstanding in their colleges and universities. We give these scholarships to to help them to um, actualize their their great goals and uh, to move forward with the education and some of them are totally dependent on it because they work very hard to get to that point we want to continue to work hard to support them. Welcome to this great city for this great event. Welcome to our 34th annual Bayou Classic Scholarship Jazz Brunch. This year's theme, then and now, making a difference. Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus. The honorees today reflect the tradition of Black Caucus standing as a beacon of light to ensure opportunity for all, in spite of their station in life. We must never forget those who historically stood before us and those who represent both faculty, staff, and students of these two historically black colleges and universities in the state. Many of us would not have the opportunities that we have today had it not been for their tireless leadership and the sacrifices that they've made. We welcome the leaders and alumni of a course of, course of students at Southern University and Gramlin State University. This event serves as a primary fundraiser for the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus that provides scholarships to students throughout the LLBC districts across the state. Your presence here this morning helps to continue that noble tradition of educating young men and women in our communities. Good morning, everyone. I'm State Representative Patricia Haynes-Smith, Chairwoman of the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus Foundation. As Chair of the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus Foundation, I want to welcome you and thank you for coming to this important event. As part of the mission of the LLBC Foundation, we provide charitable and educational resources to economically and culturally challenged citizens. We aid and assist Louisiana citizens through the LLBC Foundation by helping to bridge the gap between the economically advantaged and the economically disadvantaged. This event is just one of the many ways that we advance the overall mission of the foundation. When you support the LLBC Foundation, you support our efforts to elevate, to elevate and look forward and we look forward to having your continued support. Thank you. I'm Randall Gaines. I'm chairman of the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus. And the Black Caucus is firmly committed to aggressively advancing causes that will create and expand progressive opportunities for the citizens of this great state. The caucus is proud to be a part of this Bayou Classic, a great American tradition. The Bayou Classic continues a thrilling, sensational, endearing, and often friendly rivalry between GSU and Southern University that began in 1932. In addition to the excitement, the entertainment, most importantly, this tradition enables our two great institutions to continue to educate our eager and talented students to continue the remarkable legacy of our outstanding achievements that's been established by our former graduates. This impeccably dressed crowd is comprised of many graduates and supporters of Southern and Gramlin, so it's safe for me to close with, always true to the golden blue in GSU, I thought you knew. I'm going to be brief uh, uh, in my comments, but I simply wanted to express uh, my appreciation and gratitude uh, to the uh, caucus. Uh, we have asked much uh, of this body, and you have delivered. Uh, and uh, we are simply grateful 
You know, your generosity, your advocacy goes a long way in enabling us to advance our goals and, 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 and really uh, uh, bring to fruition uh, our mission. Uh, and indeed, uh, I want to say to you that, uh, that your advocacy is paying off. You know, Southern University, uh, just over the last couple of years, uh, have increased its enrollment uh, twofold. Uh, last year, <clears throat> we enjoyed a 20% increase in first time uh, freshmen, and this year, we added an additional 5%. Our undergraduate uh, enrollment uh, has increased uh, this year by 7%, uh, and uh, as well, uh, the, um, uh, the freshman enrollment increase by, by 7% uh, as well. Uh, you may have heard just ever so recently uh, that uh, we uh, uh, finalized a contract uh, enabling the university to advance its medical uh, marijuana uh, uh, agenda. Uh, and, uh, but that also, <clears throat> excuse me, but that also enabled the university to advance its public service agenda, but also provide uh, resources to support scholarships to our students. Uh, our corporate engagement has increased significantly, and this year uh, we raised, uh, through our alums, uh, more than $10 million, the highest level of fundraising we've ever achieved at Southern University. So, uh, Southern University and, and, and Groundman State University for the last 45 years have benefited from this stage that has enabled uh, both of our institutions to shine the light on the two premier institutions of higher education in this state and in this country. And as I said a few days ago, the world will be watching the 45th convening of the uh, Bayou Classic. So uh, thank you uh, for uh, joining with us, uh, for, for providing the needed assistance that uh, enable our, our institutions uh, to make a difference, quite frankly, uh, in the lives of those for whom we have a, a duty to serve. Um, my colleague, uh, uh, my brother and my friend, uh, we share that commonality that uh, we know what this is all about. Uh, it's a game, but in fact, uh, it's an a, a opportunity uh, to uh, shed light on, on the value, uh, the contributions on a world stage, uh, the essence uh, and spirit uh, of Groundman State University and Southern University. So again, thank you so very much. Good morning. On behalf of the students, faculty, staff, alumni, and Graham fam all over the world, I extend greetings this morning to my former colleagues uh, in the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus and all of you who uh, are in attendance here today. As we look forward to uh, appearing before the Board of Regents uh, next month, uh, we are looking to have the first and only bachelor's degree in the state of Louisiana in cybersecurity, one of 13 nationally. Yeah. As my pastor would say, yeah, that was a good place to clap. That's, that was a good place to clap. But I, I think it, it shows that, that we're not only uh, preparing students for the workforce of today, we're preparing students for the workforce of tomorrow. And so as we continue with uh, the help of our Commissioner of Higher Education, Dr. Kim Hunter-Reed, who is here uh, and who's been so incredibly supportive of both Grambling and Southern in innovation and trying to do things that will ensure uh, not only our survival, uh, but our growth in years and generations to come, we certainly could not do it without uh, Dr. Kim Hunter-Reed. And so I would ask that you give Dr. Reed a round of applause as well. And we are trying to recruit our daughter to come play volleyball at Grambling. Just thought I'd throw that in. Um, but we, we also would like to say that uh, it has been great working with, with Dr. Belton 
and uh, the administration at, at Southern University. As we thought about, and this is my third Bayou Classic as president, uh, having the same two presidents at uh, both universities, uh, having the same two football coaches, having uh, stable administrations, it has given us an opportunity to grow this event in ways that, uh, that we've not been able to do in uh, the recent past. And so your presence here today, your support of our two institutions, uh, your purchasing tickets, my pastor would say that was a good place to clap too. <laughs> your purchasing tickets to, uh, to our events ensures that we can maximize the amount of funds that we can take back to our respective institutions. The legislature does, is not in a position to support us in ways that they had in the past. And so that's why your support is so incredibly important to the very uh, serious work that we have to do, and that is to educate students on our respective campuses. Uh, before I close, I certainly want to also recognize uh, the chairman of our uh, Grambling University Foundation, Mr. David Aubrey, uh, who is here. Mr. Aubrey is right here at table 14. At, <laughs> as well as a student member of the University of Louisiana System Board, Mr. Uh, Richard Davis, who's also SGA president at Southeastern. Uh, Mr. Davis, good seeing you here as well. So again, on behalf of Graham Fam everywhere, I want to continue to uh, show appreciation to the Legislative Black Caucus for all that you all continue to do uh, in more and more increasingly difficult uh, political climate and times uh, to support the work that Dr. Belton and I are trying to do on behalf of our respective institutions. We're very uh, appreciative of the governor and the legislature for uh, once again uh, providing us stable funding without, uh, without cuts. Uh, now certainly we'd, we'd love to, uh, to see some increases, but at, at least not having mid-year cuts and, and some of those other challenges uh, certainly gives us a, a good foundation to, uh, to build upon going forward. The last two years have provided for us at least a footing, a foundation you know, to advance our goals. We've received stable funding uh, over that period of time, and we are hopeful that at least that continues, and hopefully we will uh, get an uh, uh, increase uh, in funding uh, this year. But I'm reminding uh, all that higher education is an investment, and the degree to which it is appropriately uh, funded uh, really enable us to uh, advance our goals of serving the constituents of the state of Louisiana. Give the governor another big round of applause because he's been an incredible supporter. He's been an incredible fighter for these institutions. He stood with us in good times and bad. When he was a member of the House, he fought with us, and he certainly has fought for us as our governor. Give him another round of applause. A huge thank you to Dr. Belton and President Gallo for their outstanding and tireless leadership. These two individuals give and give and give and give until they can't give any more, then they find some room to give yet some more. We're so proud of your leadership and what you've done as being the captains of these flagships and keeping things moving. Give them another big round of applause. We have several members of the governor's staff that are, that are here, um, and I will ask them to stand as I call their name. Dr. Kim Hunter-Reed, Commissioner of Higher Education. Dr. Sean Wilson, Secretary of the Department of Transportation and Development. Ms. Ava Desjois, Secretary of Louisiana Workforce Development. Ms. Erin Monroe-Wesley, Special Counsel and a little bit of everything to the Governor of State of Louisiana. Dr. Adrian Wilson, Deputy Chief of Staff for Programs and Planning. Ms. Alicia Williams, really everything to the Governor. Senior Special Assistant to the Governor. And Mr. Roderick Smith, Director of Intergovernmental Affairs. Commissioner of ATC, Juana Lombard. These are people that you don't always see, but they keep things moving. When you talk about the cool, calm duck that sits on top of the water, they are the paddles that's beneath the water making it all go. So thank you all for what you do year in, year out to make things happen for us. God bless you. Just over a year ago, there was a discussion rather regarding the idea of forming an organization solely focused on strengthening and unifying our local African-American 
businesses, and chambers of commerce. I'm proud to stand before you today and announce that that formation, that creation, has come to fruition. I would like to take this time to introduce the launch of the newly formed Louisiana Chamber of Commerce Foundation under the leadership of Mr. David Sedetian. Please stand. <laughs> president and the president of the chamber, executive director, Ms. Kalisha Garrett, and Mr. Ron Busby, President and CEO of the, United, of the U.S. Black Chambers of Commerce. Give them a round of applause. When we talk about establishing and fighting for African-American businesses in our cities, in our state, it's important that we speak with one voice. And this formation gives us an opportunity to have the continuity throughout the state to do just that. So thank you for your tireless effort, for your hard work. I'd encourage all of you to participate, sign up, join up, corporate donors, I'd encourage you to write some big checks. This is a movement that will have significant staying power and will make for a better Louisiana. It is indeed a great pleasure to recognize this young lady as the Southern University Legend Award. But before I do, I want to also say to my Senator Regina Barrow, thank you for all you do for the military in our caucus as well as in the uh, chamber because you do recognize the military quite a bit in the efforts that you put forth in the community. Thank you very much for what you do. <laughs> Brigadier General Sheridan Grace Cadoria was born in Marksville, Louisiana and graduated from Southern University with a Bachelor of Science in Business Education in 1961. Women have become generals in the military through the nursing corps, but Sheridan Grace Cadoria was the first to achieve that rank through the military police, a traditionally male route. General Cadoria learned responsibility and integrity early in her life. She lugged 100-pound bags of cotton as a girl, along with her brothers and sisters, and sister, brother and sister, only one, one of each. She walked five miles to school instead of taking the bus because blacks did not do well on the white society's public transportation. General Cordoria was one of the women featured in Brian Banker's I Dream a World, portrait of black women who changed America. She served three years in Vietnam and considered seriously leaving the army to become a nun. However, her mother, Bernice Cadoria, the most inspirational and important person in her life, encouraged her to stay because she had a responsibility to all blacks. Her mother was the first sergeant and was a woman of character and strong moral values. In 1985, General Cadoria had the privilege of having her mother pin her new rank on her uniform. Her advice to women seeking a career in the military or any other male-dominated field, a woman today has to do more than her male counterpart. Come in knowing that you're going to have to give 200% effort to get 100% credit. And most of the time, you will not get 100% credit. So I present to you Brigadier General Sheridan Grace Cadoria, U.S. Army retired, our Southern University legend, General Cadoria. Come forward. How do you introduce a trailblazer, a ceiling breaker, an all-American human being? Doug Williams was born in Zachary, Louisiana. Doug was a four-year starter at the Grambling State University as quarterback under the legendary coach Eddie Robertson. In 1977, Doug led the NCAA in several categories, including total yard from scrimmage, passing yard, touchdown passes, and yard per play. 
His relationship in the area of football was no different. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive coordinator, Joe Gibbs, was the only NFL coach to visit and scout Doug at Gramlin. It was upon Gibbs' recommendation that the Bucs drafted Doug in the first round in 1978 and played in the 1979 NFC Championship game. Doug was the lowest paid starting quarterback in the NFL and the only Afri African American. He left the Bucs in the NFL to play for the upstart United States Football League because he dared to demand to be paid for his talent. After the USL folded, Doug returned to the NFL where he was reunited with Joe Gibbs, who was the head coach of the Washington Redskins. During Super Bowl XXII, the Redskins were underdog against the Denver Broncos and John Elway. The final score would be 42 to 10, and Doug was named the game MVP. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you today Gramlin State University legend, Mr. Doug Williams. I promise you, I won't keep you long. You know, first of all, I'd like to, um, you know, as the senior vice president of player personnel at the Washington Redskins, we all have a boss. And I got an executive senior vice president at my house of player personnel is my lovely wife, Dr. Rhonda Williams. <laughs> but, you know, as, as I stand here, First of all, let me say this. This is a guy walking down the hall here by the name of Roger Kadoff. I've been knowing Roger Kadoff since I was a little boy when he played at Rosenwald New Rose High School. So I've, I've been a fan of, of Roger for a long time, and to me, he's been one of my biggest mentors. Um, but let me, let me say this. As I stand in this room and, and we talk about historical black colleges, and uh, I go a lot of places, and they always ask me, are they relevant? I think this room speaks for itself that historical black colleges are very relevant. And I can honestly say standing here today, if I had not gone to Grambling State University, I don't know where I would be. And uh, the people that helped me along the way is the reason why I'm, I'm here today. And, and I think about historical black colleges, I think about one guy, and that's a guy by the name of Eddie Robinson. Um, every day, He used to tell us all the time that at Gramlin State University, we've done so much with so little, we can almost do anything without nothing. <laughs> and um, every day when I go in that office about 6.30 in the morning, that's the first thing I, I remember because I think the reason why I'm sitting in that chair is because of a guy like Eddie Robinson who instilled those type of things in me. And I just want to say thank you to the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus for choosing me. Uh, so many guys that can be up here that went to Gramlin that are legends. And for me to be chosen, I just want to say it's a humble day for me, and thank you. Well, I was kind of surprised when um, uh, Councilman uh, Randy Gaines called me. Uh, you know, when you talk about um, a legend, and then you put Gramlin on top of it, having gone to Gramlin, there's so many uh, people that you can deem as legend of Gramlin, and to be chosen as one, as one of Gramlin legends is, is certainly something that would humble you. Tell us uh, about the importance of the HBCUs and what that means to you. Well, you know, it, it's so unfortunate that uh, there are a lot of people who think that um, the HBCUs are irrelevant. But uh, I think the most important thing, they are very, very relevant because every kid that are at an HBCU might not have an opportunity to go to other institutions. And I think the more we support the SB, S, uh, HBCU, the, the better it would be and understand that we're trying to make it uh, available to every individual, not just uh, the one that are privy and the ones who has the money to go or what have you, uh, uh, maybe all the means. But the HBCU, because you get some things there that you might not get other places. The first rep, the first rep recipient we're going to recognize 
is a gentleman by the name of Mr. Melvin Emery. Mr. Melvin Emery is a sophomore at Southern University, majoring in accounting, and he recognizes that education is the key for social and political advancement. The next recipient is Ms. Jasmine King. She's a junior at Grambling State University, completing a degree in leisure studies with a concentration in therapeutic recreation. Ms. King wants to enhance the quality of life of others and uns unserved populations. <laughs> Last recipient is Ms. Reagan Nation. She is a senior majoring in biology. She wants to attend medical school and become a pediatrician. In 2018, we still have African-American students who are the first in their families or grew up in foster care to attend college. This year, the LLBC and the LLBCF are recognizing first-generation students from each school because education has and will continue to be the great equalizer. This year, we have one former foster care student, Mr. Don Trey Aro. He cannot be with us today because he is a member of the Human Jukebox. Making the presentations to our generation students are Mr. Edwin Murray and Representative Patrick Jefferson. Ms. Melanie Medina graduated from Grace King High School in New Orleans in Metairie, rather than the top 10% of her class with a 3.9 GPA in May 2018. She took advanced placement honor courses and dual enrollment. She is a freshman pursuing a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science. Ms. Medina's goals include becoming an attorney and president of the United States of America. She is the she is the proud daughter of, of Ms. Amparo Dionisa. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Melanie Medina. Mr. Percy Cargo Jr. is the son of Yvonne and Percy Cargo Sr. of Donaldsonville, Louisiana. He is a senior majoring in management and a starting defensive back for four years for the Gramlin State University Fighting Tigers. He's on the Dean's List, maintaining a 3.76 GPA. His aspiration is to obtain his Master's in Economics and then become an entrepreneur. He wants to either have a trucking business, bar barbershop, or recreational center. With the stats he has amassed throughout his high school, high school and collegiate career, he may be following in the steps of that other great Gremlin legend, Doug Williams. Mr. Cargo Sr., congratulations. Our members have continued to uh, demonstrate leadership throughout the state and excelled in politics, civil rights, uh, business. We often recognize uh, our, our members as they leave the legislature and go on to great, doing great things uh, in Louisiana. And our first, our first awardee is Representative Jeff Hall, who is now, who has been recently elected the first black mayor of the city of Alexandria. And our next awardee, another distinguished gentleman who did an outstanding job with us while he was serving in the legislature, Representative Marcus Hunter, who's been elected as a district judge, 4th District, Judicial District, yeah. Louisiana. Always let the judge go first. 
And I want to thank you all and appreciate it and really going to miss this group. Have a nice day. A few years ago, we decided to look at awarding a chairman's award, and we have added now two chairman's awards to make sure that we recognize people that we feel are deserving of these awards. When I grew up in Baton Rouge, the name Barranco was a very common household name in my family. And Dr. B.V. Barranco was a good friend of my family as well. The person that we're going to honor today is Dr. Rafael A. Barranco, Sr., posthumously. Dr. Barranco was born in Baton Rouge. She graduated from Southern University Lab School and enrolled at Xavier University of Louisiana at the age of 16. Upon his graduation in 1956, he enlisted in the U.S. Army and served overseas. Dr. Barranco graduated from Meharry Medical College School of Dentistry in Nashville, Tennessee. It was there he met the love of his life, Ms. Terry Bryant Barranco. After an internship in New Jersey, a teaching stint at Meharry, staff dentist at the VA hospital in Tuskegee, Dr. Barranco moved back to Lafayette, where he became the first African-American dentist in the city. He was not just a dentist who practiced for over 55 years. Dr. Barranco believed in the power of education and that education was the birthright of every child. This belief led him to run for a seat on the Lafayette Parish School Board, where he served for 18 years and was the first African-American elected in Lafayette Parish. Dr. Barranco was a member of numerous professional, social, and civic organizations and was honored by noted organizations such as the 100 Black Men, the Lafayette Council on Human Relations, Alpha Phi Alpha and Omega Psi Phi fraternities. Accepting the award on behalf of the family is Dr. Barranco's wife, Ms. Terry Bryant Barranco, and we welcome her to the stage. And thank you to Representative Landry for bringing him forward. The Chairman's Award is presented to noteworthy individuals and trailblazing pioneers, icons that have committed their life to public service, civil rights, and community activism. My first award I'm proud to present to a great and outstanding national political leader, Congressman Cedric Richmond. When I first had an opportunity to see Congressman Richmond in act, well, then State Representative Richmond in action, I assumed with all he had accomplished, he was 35, but he looked 25. And I later found out that he actually was 25. He's done so much at a young age. He represents the second congressional district in the United States House of Representatives. Congressman Richmond currently serves on the House Homeland Security Committee and the House Committee on Judiciary. In November 2016, he became the first congressman for Louisiana to be elected chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus. <laughs> congressman Richmond has given provocative and inspiring commentary on CNN, MSNBC. He was instrumental and very impactful in his nation nationwide leadership and helping the Democrats regain majority in Congress. And I have on, on the podium with me uh, Senator Troy Carter and Senator Regina Barrow to join me in presenting him this award. Congressman Cedric Richmond. Big, big, big round of applause for our Congressman. Let me uh, thank the chairman for the award. And it means a lot, and I'll tell you why. The LLBC is like a family. And as I look around and see uh, so many of my friends that I served with, uh, people that you know, people that you admire, uh, 
it's great to get recognition from them. And then I look out and see so many former members that are trailba trailblazers. I see Diana Bejwa, who set the path. This is the year of the woman, but Diana was the year of the woman before the year of the woman. So without Diana Bejwa, you wouldn't have the Stacey Abrams of the world. Diana set that path. To my good friend Lambert Boissier, who, when I first entered politics, told me Cedric in politics never run out of two things. He said, never run out of money and never run out of promises. So thank you, Lamb. <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, but also, when you think of what Doug Williams did in football and set the path, that's what Big Duck Jerome Smith did in New Orleans for African Americans, period. A true, a true civil rights leader and freedom rider. And I will tell you, when I was elected to Congress, I went to sit next to John Lewis. I thought he was going to congratulate me on being a young man elected and all this other great stuff. First thing he said was, you from New Orleans? I said, yeah. He said, well, how's Big Duck doing? So that's the impact that uh, he had. And I want to thank my family. My mother is here. Mom, stand up. My wife, Raquel. My brother, Sydney, and his wife, Stephanie. And then, of course, my good friends, Ike, Blair, Jimmy Woods, and Judge uh, Regina Bartholomew. So let me, let me just uh, end with this, because we are uh, friends and family. I want to congratulate uh, the new mayor and the new judge on leaving. When anyone walks in my office in DC, the first thing they notice are my Eagle Awards from the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus. I'm lucky because I have two. Uh, one was given to me, and one was given to Avon Honey. And Avon's wife allowed me to put it in my office. So I display uh, two eagles because that's the love and the friendship I have for the LLBC. Now, people will ask me, who am I rooting for today? And I'll just tell you this. Gramlin State University's president, Rick Gallo, I was in his wedding. He is a dear friend of mine. I love him to death. However, <laughs> my mom and daddy met at Southern University on the yard. <laughs> and Rick is gone, so I can be petty. <laughs> I have an honorary degree from Southern University, <laughs> thanks to President Belton. I don't have one from Grambling. So go Jaguars. We're so proud, very proud of uh, Congressman Richmond. And he is, he is a former chairman of the Legislative Black Caucus. Uh, Lambert Bossie, glad to see you here. Thank you so much for coming. Our next awardee is Dr. Charles Guidry, and I asked Terry Landry, Representative Terry Landry, to come and join me as we present this award because he's the gentleman that recommended this outstanding young, uh, young man uh, for this, this award. Dr. Charles Guidry grew up farming with his parents in Erat, am I Erat, Louisiana? Erat, okay. He, he's a Gramlin State University alumni, having received a Bachelor of Arts in Education. Not long after his graduation in 1964, he was drafted and spent two years in Vietnam. Utilizing his GI benefits, he got a master's degree in 1973 from Texas Southern University with stints of teaching in Houston and Lafayette. Dr. Guidry decided that he would return to farming. Dr. Guidry is the owner of 960 acres and manages 3,200 acres producing sugarcane in the state of Louisiana. He is the only African American on the board of American Sugar Cane League, the American Sugar Cane League, and represents the interests of Louisiana cane farmers throughout the nation. I present to you, proudly present to you, Dr. Charles Guidry, Louisiana Proud, Louisiana Strong. It has been a great honor for me today, a great day, LBC. honored me as an LBCF, honored this award to me. 
as you know, my career is a little different from everybody else. Uh, I'm a sugarcane foreman for Million Parish and Lafayette Parish. Uh, I'm easy to be remembered. Whenever you sweeten your coffee in the morning, just think about uh, Dr. Charles Guidry. And I need to, uh, everybody has a boss, and my boss is my wife, Wanda Faye Guidry. I have a beautiful daughter, Cassandra Guidry, a sister, uh, Dr. Gail Guidry. Good afternoon, my name is Representative John Bagneris, and I'm proud to present the Avery C. Alexander Award to this recipient. A good friend of mine, Reverend Alexander's family, so this goes both ways. This award is presented in the name of one of Louisiana's greatest civil rights leaders, the Reverend Avery C Caesar Alexander. We honor his legacy as a lawmaker and a member of the Louisiana House of Representatives. By giving this award to Mr. Jerome Smith, Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, at the age of 19, joined the New Orleans chapter of the Congre Congress of Racial Equality, which is known as CORE, while a student at Southern University at New Orleans. He was a veteran of the New Orleans sit-ins and freedom rides. Before we continue, I'm going to ask the, the granddaughter of the Reverend Avery C. Alexander, Ms. Avis Brock, who is a graduate of Southern University at New Orleans, to join us as we make this presentation. Please come forward. Okay. As a freedom rider, Mr. Smith endured beatings, particularly one from a brass knuckled blow to his head. He was one of the constant individuals boycotting stores along Dryad Street in New Orleans because of their refusal to hire and serve blacks. Mr. Smith, in 1968, founded Tambourine and Fan in the Treme area to instill in young people the importance of culture, history, and tradition. He continued to teach classes modeled on these these principles on the Freedom Schools during the Freedom Summer of 1964. As was mentioned earlier, Mr. Smith is affectionately known as Duck, and I need to say it almost took an act of Congress, Congressman Richmond, to get Duck here on this morning. But with the help of his daughter, Farron, Farron, please stand up. We're able to have him here on this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, as a state senator from District 4 here in New Orleans, it is my honor and my pleasure to nominate and on this morning to present the distinct honor and to present the 2018 Avery C. Alexander Civil Rights Award to a gentleman who has given his life to fight for those who often go unfought for. I present to you a champion for change, the mayor of Treme, the Honorable Jerome Smith. I just want to make a short statement. When I was a boy, I suffered with a severe speech impediment, and children would tease me, say, two words for a nickel. And my mother and my great-grandmother, Molly Singleton, would sit down with me. We had a house near where Noka is. And my grandmother had, would say, a very few words and she would point her finger in my face and say, one day, I say, Grandma, why you always looking at me like that? She would say, one day. One day I was sitting with Robert Kennedy and this little tired tongue boy, they discovered in Robert Kennedy's writings that he, he, this rich, rich, politically powerful white man. Listen to me. My mission is important to children who have disabilities because he said he would like to be like this boy. And somebody else wrote that that moment in that day in his apartment looking over Central Park that it changed the course of history because he called John Kennedy on the phone. And you know why 
This award has a value, more than a value. My first demonstration in the city was not on Canal and Rampart by Woolwork. That's where I went to jail at. That's where I witnessed a man eating his feces in jail. Do you hear me? Because this struggle I do not play with. But I was by Venus Garden and the person I was standing with, I was trying to find something to do after they, I had to leave Southern University. However, I knew when I was in fifth grade I was going to Southern to play in the band. I knew I was going to be in the band because somebody, Morris Jeff Sr., brought Southern students to grade school to sit in and play with us, and I fell in love with that uniform. I was in fifth grade. Now, but when I went on Drive Street, Reverend Alexander was on the picket line, and I asked him if I could march with them. This is an important moment. But I would like to propose something to Shedrick, just quick, just one thing. Martin Luther King Holiday is anemic. It's anemic nationally. A person like me, my time's in jail. The fact that I walk crippled and some days I cannot use telephones and I only can do that because George Raymond saved my life in Macon, Mississippi. George Raymond is the brother-in-law of Reverend Blake's. But why don't we look at this? If everybody in here would stand up and say this, that in January, we would register one person in Martin Luther King's yeah. name as a means of saying thanks. And if you can't do it on his birthday, do it on your birthday, and there's no excuse for not doing it. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute, Jesus. The day is my daughter's birthday. <laughs> she's the only reason I'm here. And she's pretty cute to be for I ain't gonna tell her. <laughs> Happy birthday. Uh, Happy birthday, Farron. <laughs> it is with great pleasure that the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus Pinky Wilkerson Humanitarian Award is given to Ms. Jacqueline A. Scott of Bolger City. Attorney Scott began practicing law as a solo practitioner in Bolger City, quickly establishing national and local connections that benefited her clients. In 2016, she was appointed as an ad hoc judge, an indication that her colleagues and judges respected her. Ms. Scott, as a leader in the legal community, has a legacy of mentoring young professional women and is not intimidated by the stereotype of men dominating the courtroom. And by the way, she wants to remind everyone that her new practice area is 18-wheeler accidents nationwide. Thank you. In addition to her successful legal practice, Ms. Jackson is involved in, Ms. Scott, I'm sorry, Ms. Scott is involved in many civics and community organizations her recent awards include 2018 African American Making a Difference, 2017 10 Best Lawyer Firm, 2017 Hospitality Business Award, and 2016 Making a Difference Award from the Shreveport Bar. And also, um, she has organized and developed her own Cajun show, being the TV judge. Not only that, but she was honored in the 30th African American Parade Celebration, the largest parade throughout this country as community leader, as community leader of not only the city of Shreveport, but throughout her other efforts and hard works that she do throughout the state of Louisiana. It is with great, great pleasure 
that I present the Pinky C. Wilkinson Humanitarian Award to none other than my friend, one of the hardest working community women that I know, Attorney Jackie Scott. Thank you all so very much. I am extremely honored to be a recipient of this award. And when I was told that I would be honored, I was really uh, flabbergasted because I knew uh, Ms. Wilkinson. I had the opportunity to uh, be in a lot of meetings with her. Not only was she an educator, she's a legislator, she worked throughout the state. But what I remember the most is that she cared for her father uh, she was so endeared to our state, North Louisiana, and I'm grateful, and I thank you all so very much. Good afternoon. I guess that they saved the best for last. <laughs> <laughs> the Charles Hudson Award is awarded to those with the ability to envision a brighter, more positive future for our communities. The award was created in honor of former State Representative Charles Hudson's who was a dedicated member of the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus. This year's recipient is also a visionary leader and a former state legislator. Mr. Roy Kazare has been my mentor since I was in my teens. Growing up in a little town called Lutcher, as he represented my area, I will volunteer and assist with some of the community service events that Mr. Roy led throughout our district. Mr. Roy Cazare was my inspiration to get involved in public service as I became the youngest black state councilman for the St. James Parish. While in the legislature, Mr. Roy Cazare and the late Mr. Charles Huston worked together that would allow the DBEs to gain knowledge and experience by working with prime contractors through the Department of Transportation. Before this legislation could be finalized, Mr. Huston died, and Mr. Quisera had led the legislation amendment to change the, the title to the Huston Initiative Act. The purpose of this legislation was to help eligible small businesses to gain great access to purchasing and contracting opportunities. Some of the awards Mr. Quisera received are the Legislator of the Year by the Louisiana Chapter of National Black Council Mayors, the Toastmaster International Outstanding Public Speakers Award, Currently, Mr. Cruzera serves as the Deputy Director with the Port of South Louisiana, where he's coordinating, evaluating, and analyzing and supervising a, a wide variety of projects. It is with great honor that we present to you the 2018 Charles Huston Award recipient, Mr. Roy Cruzera, Jr. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Representative Kazare could not be with us today due to a recent surgery, but he asked me to accept this award on his behalf and to tell you how proud he is to be receiving this award from the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus. As a former member, he told you that he stood on this stage at many times to present things, and it, so it is an honor for him to receive this, and I will accept it on his behalf and uh, make sure that he get it back home. Thank you so much. Let's give another big round of applause for all of our honorees and scholarship recipients. Let's give them another round of applause. It's been an extreme honor to serve as your MC. I'm so glad that you were able to be here. I'm so proud of the people that I serve with in the Legislative Black Caucus. I'd be remiss if I did not take a moment to thank our staff who works tirelessly to make sure all this happens. Give all of our staff, both of the Legislative Black Caucus and the Foundation, a big round of applause. What kind of results have you seen from the scholarships that you offered over the years in terms of uh, young professionals uh, throughout the state of Louisiana? Our young professionals are going into just about every kind of a discipline that you can think of, from engineering to uh, doctors and lawyers. I mean, we have young people that have been with us and have gotten these scholarships that are doing extremely well across the country, and we're very, very proud of them. And of course, the caucus also gives uh, scholarships to our young people in high school 
to encourage them to continue high school and do well. And so sometimes we follow them as well. I have one young lady that is doing fantastic who got my scholarship for, and she's in New York. She's got her own business. I mean, they're entrepreneurs. They're doing just about everything you can uh, think about in this world and society today because the opportunity for them are limitless. That's something that the kids look forward to because they know that we're going to help them uh, advance their careers and uh, enable them to get an education. So that's an important, that's one of the most important parts. It's just not about entertainment, it's about providing opportunities for kids to uh, get a, uh, a quality, uh, quality education at our, at our two schools. The reason that this weekend is important is because the HBCUs educate, motivate, and really prepare the next generation of business leaders, business owners, as well as elected officials. If we look across the country and we see what's happening in reference to business ownership, we see that the young people are really taking the charge. And so for this weekend, it's important for our business leaders as well as policy leaders to understand that internships as well as opportunities are extremely important to develop and mentor the next generation of leaders. How can people and businesses get involved in helping the scholarship fund of the caucus? Well, actually you can donate to this event. You can also donate to the foundation uh, to be able to uh, give money to the scholarship fund. So that's the way you help. You also help by giving us opportunities to work with you and your organization on activities that you put on as well. If people have questions like more information, how can they get in touch? They can call our caucus office at 225-342-7342. And it's so important that you do call us because our, our, our staff is phenomenal. I mean, they do this every year putting this event on and they do a phenomenal job for us.